Welcome to Holly EFI Training Part 19. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our acceleration enrichment. We're going to find that our main field table can't properly characterize the throttle changes as we're driving around. So as our throttle is constantly moving, we're going to be allowing bursts of airflow into our engine very quickly. And our main field table only is going to be able to characterize the fuel delivery for steady state throttle operation or airflow coming into our engine. So at idle, cruising conditions, or wide open throttle conditions, our throttle is going to be relatively fixed and the amount of airflow coming in the engine will also be relatively fixed. So the main fuel table can properly characterize that. But when we get into the situation where we're going to be constantly sweeping our throttle or giving large throttle inputs, we are not going to be able to just use our base fuel values. We're going to be implementing what's known as acceleration enrichment. It's going to be taking a look at the rate of change in our throttle movement or our map pressure movement, and it's going to be adding fuel in accordance to that. So there's going to be six different tables we have to take a look at, and we're going to have some other values that we have to understand what they mean to implement the acceleration enrichment properly. So let's jump into this video so we can learn how to work with our acceleration enrichment. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our acceleration enrichment feature in our Holly EFI software. The acceleration enrichment is going to allow us to properly characterize the amount of fuel delivery for sudden bursts of airflow or air mass entering our engine as we're giving throttle input to the engine. So our main fuel table here, we've talked about what this represents and how to tune it, whether we're in VE or speed density based fuel flow rate fuel strategies, we're going to find that it only can characterize steady state airflow coming into our engine. So if we're looking at idle conditions, our throttle plate's going to be shut, so the amount of airflow is relatively fixed. At part throttle conditions here in vacuum driving, we're going to find that we're going to have relatively small throttle inputs to the, to the engine to make it run at a steady state condition at 3,000 RPMs, let's say, on the highway. We'll find that the throttle will be anywhere between 5 to maybe 20% throttle, and the airflow coming in will be relatively fixed. As we go into wide open throttle here at the higher loads, we're going to find that the airflow is also going to be relatively fixed because our throttle plate is going to be open. So it's going to be between 80 to 100% when we're going into the higher load, higher uh, sections of our table here. And the amount of airflow will be relatively fixed at that point as well. So the fuel delivery here will be proper for the amount of steady state airflow or air mass coming into the engine. But we're going to get into a situation if we're, let's say, we're in cruising conditions here. We're operating at 10% throttle and all of a sudden we give a large throttle input change. For one or two seconds, the airflow or air mass that's entering our engine will exceed what our main table here can properly characterize. We'll find that it eventually settles out to a certain load range in the table, a certain cell point, and that's going to be then uh, the airflow or air mass is going to be essentially catching up to the table and will deliver the proper amount of fuel. But that transition point from one section of the table to the other is not going to be properly characterizing that fuel delivery. We have to use acceleration enrichment to momentarily increase the injector pulse width to deliver more fuel into the engine for that brief one or two second period of time where that rapid airflow change is made. And then it can go right back to calculating from our main table once that airflow or air mass steadies out. So let's take a look at our acceleration enrichment and learn how to work with it. There's gonna be some key tables here that we have to understand how to work uh, in programming and, and going in and calibrating. So, in our fuel ICF, we're going to jump down here under acceleration enrichment. Now within here we have six total tables to deal with. And we're going to find that the acceleration enrichment is going to be based on both uh, TPS and map pressure changes. And we're going to call this rate of change or TPS ROC or map ROC. Now what I want to do real quick before we start to jump into these tables here, there's going to be some parameters that we want to put together in a live channel list here so we can keep track of what's going on for acceleration enrichment tuning. So we're going to jump up here to this E icon that's going to allow us to go in and create our own custom live window here. We have a window, this is called Traction ASM. We can get rid of this. Let's call this Excel Tuning. So we're going to call this Excel Tuning and then we're going to be able to go and get rid of these. So I'm going to go grab these parameters here and just gra drag them over here to our other list and then we're going to drag some parameters down into our list here so we can keep track of what's going on. So I'm going to bring engine RPM into my Excel tuning list. I'm going to be bringing my injector pulse width into my... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.